Today I canned some strawberry pancake syrup, and you can use this video as a guide, but before you can anything, be sure to educate yourself on proper canning procedures. The recipe I'm using is from the USDA, and I'll put a link in the description box. And I want to say I've used the recipe for strawberry syrup in the ball canning book before, and this is far better. This is excellent. I capped and washed my strawberries, then I ran them through my food mill, and I'm using the berry screen for this. Uh, if you don't have a strainer, you can just mash up the berries with a potato masher, and if you like, you can strain them through cheesecloth or a piece of cloth and only use the juice. But this uh, food mill does a very nice job. Here's the waste from the strainer. Uh, the strainer removed probably 95% of the seeds. It did a real nice job, and it also removed the tougher parts of the strawberries. Here's how the juice ended up. It's a good consistency. It's not watery. It has a bit of pulp to it. I measured out the juice. I ended up with 8 cups, so I added that to the pot. And I added 12 cups of sugar. Then I stirred it well. I brought it to a boil and simmered it for one minute. Be sure to skim the foam off very well or else this is what you'll end up with. And I ended up redoing two of the bottles because of it. That foam will settle and you'll lose the proper headspace. I bought the bottles from Fillmore Containers, and I'll put a link in the description box. They were uh, $5.50 to a dozen, and the lids were $0.10 cents a piece. These are the 8-ounce bottles, and if you buy any, you want to get the ones with the letters CT on them, which stands for a continuous thread, which is like the um, home canning type of lids uh, versus the lug type, which are like commercial type jars. Hope that made sense. So you want to fill a hot bottle with the hot syrup, wipe the rim of the bottle clean, then add a hot lid. Put the lid on tightly and when all the bottles are full, then process it in a water bath canner for 10 minutes or adjust the time for your altitude. These bottles are a little bit taller than a quart jar, so they didn't fit well in my water bath canner. I bought a taller stock pot to process these bottles in. When the time was up, I turned off the heat, removed the lid, and let them sit for five minutes before I removed the bottles from the pot. I found it was easier to lift them out by using the lifter upside down. Since these lids are so small, they won't pop like a regular canning jar when they seal. But a way you can check to make sure that the jars have sealed is you can lay a knife across the top of the lid. And uh, as you'll see, you cannot see any daylight between the knife and the lid because the lid is flat. But after it seals, you can lay a knife across the top of the lid and it will be a bit concave and you can see a little bit of daylight under it. Uh, when you see that, you know that the jar has sealed. So I ended up with 11 full bottles, and these are basically half pint bottles, and one partially full bottle. And I wanted to tell you that over time, this syrup will turn to a dark uh, red, a deep brownish red. It's perfectly normal. Um, the syrup you buy in the store is that color. Uh, this jar is uh, one that I can a few years ago and that's the ball recipe and you can see how thin it is compared to uh, the thickness that this turned out. I thought I would take a minute to try to explain something here. If you've seen my other videos, I've tried to explain the difference between something that is hot and expanded and cold and contracted, and these bottles illustrate this pretty well. Uh, if you'll look here, the, these bottles are full, 
and they are full of a hot liquid. They are in an expanded state. Now look at the bottles after they had cooled and notice how far the liquid level has gone down. Uh, no liquid was lost from these jars, these bottles. Uh, this is the difference between the expansion of the hot liquid and the contraction of the cold liquid. Now if you start out with a cold liquid in a jar and you have it you know at a half inch head space when it expands and gets hot and expands it will it can f overfill that jar and this is one of the reasons why people are having problems losing the contents of their jar is because they're starting out with cold contents to begin with and then it gets it expands and gets pushed out of the top uh, so I just I hope that makes sense I thought I would point it out because these bottles illustrate it so well Hope it helps.